Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, drone rage may become a new expression. Orbital ATK tests its RD-181 main engine. Piper's diesel Archer gets a significant TBR increase. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 3rd, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. As we were finishing up production of Airborne, a late-breaking story hit our newsroom. ANN Editor-in-Chief uh, Jim Campbell will give us an update. Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. Well, we've had a tough couple of weeks in the airshow business, and the entire aviation community has worn two outstanding flyers in as many weeks. Here we go into a third weekend, and God help us, there's been another loss. Well, let's start out with the good news. Although a United States Air Force Thunderbird went down shortly after flyovers that were conducted in celebration of the United States Air Force Academy's graduation ceremonies attended by President Obama, an F-16 heading back to Peterson AFB experienced what has been alternately described as both a power plant and a control problem, but otherwise reported problems, and elected to bail out of the aircraft after making sure that the aircraft was set to impact in an area that was unoccupied. The aircraft settled in fairly level and is surprisingly intact. And Major Alex Turner of the United States Air Force Thunderbirds got to hit the silk. He not only did a really good job of bailing out, but he not only walked away from it, gave a thumbs up to his passing photographers, but got to meet with the president before the president left to go back to Washington. I have little doubt that the president congratulated him on his survival. The question is whether or not he has to borrow his rabbit's foot. For politicians, that could be a big thing. And then a short time later, even more heartbreaking was the fact that we lost the United States Navy Blue Angel. It's hard to explain how these things happen, but shortly after takeoff, Blue Angel number six, Marine Captain Jeff Cuss, apparently had some mode of problem with the aircraft. It went down, went down hard, major fireball, no parachute, and we have received confirmation, and it has been made public that this phenomenal aviator was lost to us all. The Blue Angels have stood down for the airshow activities they had planned in Smyrna, Tennessee this weekend. The Thunderbirds are looking at replacing uh, Thunderbird 6 here in the not too distant future. And we're looking forward to their return to flight status uh, probably fairly quickly. And to the Blue Angel investigation and for those folks to be able to close ranks and soldier on as they always do. In the meantime, a fine aviator's been lost. This community has lost one of its own. And we send our prayers and best wishes to the family and friends of this phenomenal Marine who sacrificed his life, showing the world how great aviation and aviators can be. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and we'll have more of an update for you come Monday. Thank you. Vertical lift drones being flown by a knowledgeable hobbyist have caused problems to the point of frustration to many. However, in a recently published YouTube video, we see a case of a drone operator having his drone taken by a woman that was in serious need of anger management intervention. The short story is, after the operator lost control of his drone, causing it to make a hard landing in an open area designated for model aircraft operation, a woman picked it up and attempted to walk away with it the video makes it clear that the drone landed without endangering anyone in any way. The reason this event is on YouTube is that the drone camera was operating the entire time and tells the whole story. The 16 minute video shows the woman becomes increasingly agitated as the drone operator politely requests for the drone to be returned. We should warn you the language on the part of the woman is not very family friendly. The police finally become involved and the issue was resolved calmly and respectfully between the drone operator and the police officer. The video begins with the following caption statement. The goal of this video is to show that even though most FPV pilots practice safe and responsible flying, there will always be irrational people out there who seek out conflict with drones and drone pilots. Orbital ATK has conducted a full power hot fire test of the upgraded first stage propulsion system of its Ontario's medium class rocket using new RD-181 main engines. 
The 32nd test took place at Virginia Space's Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport, and the initial indications are that the test was fully successful. Assuming the success of the test is confirmed, it will clear the way for the resumption of Orbital ATK's cargo logistics missions to the International Space Station from Wallops Island, Virginia, currently scheduled for July. During the test, a number of operational milestones were met, including full propellant loading sequence, launch countdown and engine ignition and shutdown commands, as well as multiple throttle settings, including full engine power. Orbital ATK will now purge and clean the engines of residual propellants and return the first stage used in the test to the horizontal integration facility for full reconditioning prior to use on the AO7 mission slated for later this year. After the break, the Continental CD-155 diesel engine is improved. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. As diesel engines are becoming a proven alternative in general aviation aircraft, Piper Aircraft has announced that the Archer DX Time Before Replacement, referred to as the TBR for its Continental Diesel CD-155 engine, has increased to 2,100 hours. This TBR increase infects the CD-155 engines manufactured since December 1st, 2015, and all Archer DX models beginning in 2016. The Continental Motor Group says that the TBR extension from the previous 1,200 hours to 2,100 hours is due to several design and engineering improvements in the last two years. In addition, the gearbox and timing chain will be rated for 1,200 hours. Simon Caldicott, the president and CEO of Piper Aircraft, said in part, This is a major step forward in advancement for Archer, DX, and Piper customers. Considering that many of our customers are flight training operators who need to control costs, the Archer DX is quickly becoming the value leader in the single engine trainer market. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Aviation is a huge part of everyone's life, whether it relates to actually flying or to the technology that surrounds it. Jim says the mainstream media needs to do a better job when it reports on aviation issues. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. Been an interesting week. I've been getting a lot of correspondence from folks about Icon Aircraft. And I don't know about you, but I'm about as sick of the Icon Aircraft mess as anybody. And yet, at the same time, it's kind of like watching the train wreck. You can't avert your eyes from it. And train wreck is probably a pretty good way to describe it. We're getting a lot of information. Uh, it all is fairly well consistent and, in some cases, well corroborated. And we may have more to say down the line, but at this stage of the game, we just simply want to see what happens next. But the plain fact of the matter is this. We're getting a lot of correspondence about why. Why is this story a story now and not years ago? The hype, the nonsense, the smoke and garbage has been going on for years. This is not new. ICON has been talking about how great they were and all the things they were going to do and promising production since 2010. It's 2016, and now it's too hard. After $85 million, 100 some odd employees, and all this expertise, and all these guys have great degrees and great this and great that, it's too hard. And more important, this brilliant sales contract, which they tried to defend, well, they're going to change that because, well, they were wrong. 
frankly, I want to know what they were right about. But more important than that is this. Why? Why did the aviation media sit by most cases blindly and publish this drivel? This was the second coming. This was great stuff. This was going to re-energize aviation because Kirk Hawkins said so and Icon said so and Icon's PR machine just could not be denied. And yet very few journalists really stepped up and asked the questions. Yes, we did. Be truthful. I wish we'd started earlier. I wish we'd done it better. And overall, this industry deserves better. But the editorial prostitution that's been brought up time and time again, hundreds of times in the emails and conversations I've had with people, is disgusting. It didn't work. And more important, it deceived us all. So what do we do about it? We demand better. We must have better. To all my brethren out there and ancestors in the aviation media, we can do better. We need to do better. The hype, the nonsense has to disappear, and good, solid, credible reporting and good writing to go with it has to be the order of the day. It hasn't been here before. How can we make it now? How can we restore the trust that this community needs in its media sources so that this community can start making progress, come together again, and build a new industry for the future? Because right now, we've got some real damage being done by ICON, and I don't see how we're going to get out of it yet. But starting first with good, solid, truthful reporting, well, that's a darn good start. So say I. What about you? For the Air News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, fuel-efficient drones are bad news for the bad guys. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems has announced the longest endurance flight of the Predator BMQ-9 Reaper Big Wing aircraft. The flight lasted more than 37 hours as the drone demonstrated its ability to launch, climb altitude, and loiter to collect intelligence data. For the fifth time, Airbus challenges students worldwide to innovate for the future of aviation by launching the latest Fly Your Ideas competition. The competition offers an opportunity for students to co-innovate with Airbus on real challenges facing the aviation industry. The FAA and EASA have both certified the second engine option for the Airbus 320neo. Both agencies have approved the CFM Leap 1A engine for use with the aircraft, which allows for the delivery of the A320neo equipped with this engine for this summer. Morgan Advanced Materials has introduced their Firemaster battery bag, which is capable of containing the heat spread in the event of a lithium battery fire. It's proposed that this bag could lead to a solution to shipping lithium batteries by air. Stetson University has launched an innovative drone index called Drones9, which includes nine publicly traded companies with drone-related exposures. University students will manage a real portfolio comprising $3.5 million in stocks and bonds. The university touts a track record of previous successes. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back on to the rest of the news. 
Senator John Thune, chairman of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, this week renewed his call for the U.S. House of Representatives to take up the FAA Act of 2016, following a new report on aviation security by the GAO that highlighted the need to address vulnerability of airport security to an insider threat. Thune said in part, it's time for the House to act and avoid short-term extension of aviation authorities that doesn't address aviation safety and security. Reflecting concern echoed in the GAO report, the Senate passed bill enhanced its requirements and vetting for airport employees with access to secure areas. It expands the use of random and physical inspections of airport employees in secure areas and requires a review of perimeter security. When the Senate passed FAA reauthorization bill was passed to the House, a request was made by the Senate to move expeditiously. However, that has not happened. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, I believe I can fly.